everyone for joining us. Let's take a conversation forward. I'm being joined by the national chairman of IPAC, Interpartial Advisory Council, and the presidential candidate in the 2023 election, Alaji Abaji Sani. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you for and having I me. And I also have Mr. Ayo Oyalo. He's uh, a political economist and also a member of the APC. Thank you so much, Mr. Yalo, for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Sean. Ah, gentlemen, what a time in our nation. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Uh, Yalo. The president has taken, so I mean, several, a, a few decisions. The broadcast, uh, the, uh, the, the, the decision to also even investigate the CBN. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the palliatives, a, a few decisions. But the state of the economy is still where it is. Labor is being on the street. <sighs> Do you think that Nigerians have some level of hope? Uh, I believe a lot of people say, look, give the president some chance. He's just gotten into office. Yeah, he's just spent uh, just a little bit over 60 days in office. So we cannot expect that um, he will solve all problems automatically. Like you rightly posited, he gave a speech on Monday. And um, I have had cause to also peruse his speech over and over again after his speech, after he had delivered it. And um, one thing that that speech will show to you is that for the first time you have somebody who wants to speak in a language that uh, will communicate to Nigerians directly. He didn't just want to talk for the sake of talking. He wants us to understand. So he has uh, rightly explained what is going on, why they did what they did, and what you should expect in the coming days. So I'm, I'm happy with the speech. And in terms of uh, investigating the CBN, I, I think it was a, it's a right call because... Um, if you will remember, I think it was in your studio here where we talked about the agric intervention that CBN has been doing and so many other interventions. Uh, it has not yielded the kind of result we expect. So there has been a lot of uh, scandals that, that was reported in that period before this government came in. We remember the one that involved the anchor borrower program where billions have been uh, spent on agriculture and there is no result, especially in terms of the rise uh, farming. We know the former MD of the Nigerian incentive-based risk-sharing system for agricultural lending, NARSA, was removed from office owing to these scandals. And as we speak, he has not been charged to any court. So I believe this investigation of CBN might unearth some of the things that happened because I understand it's other government businesses too. So I believe the what happened under the Anchor Borough vis-a-vis the CBN governor that is now under suspension, under investigation, and the former MD of NARSA, Ali Abdulhamid, should all be made to answer are you, for. Are you aware there are a lot of investigation going on? I'm a very aware of, of the, Yeah, I've been reporting to and the EFCC. Let me finish now. You ask me. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just. I'm, yeah, just I'm aware of them. In fact, the one that took over from the one that was removed in NASA has been with the DSS and on and off like that. So yes, a lot of investigation is going on. And for me, that is the right thing to do because you see, we've been sweeping too many things under the carpet. We cannot continue to sweep under the carpet. You just. Rightly stated that the economy is struggling. If, for instance, the agricultural uh, plan that the former president had, Buhari president had, pres presidency had, if the people who handled it have not mismanaged it the way it was mismanaged, we will not have this kind of food inflation we have. And I always say it everywhere. If food is taken away from the problem of the people, the problem is over 50% reduced. But the food inflation is so high because despite the effort, and we must give it to President Buhari, he wanted a lot to do in agriculture, and he spent money on it, but people who were supposed to manage it messed it up. So it is clear that they need to be investigated. And I'm happy he said it, that when I leave the office, nobody should come and call me. I did what I need to do. If you don't do what you need to do, if you are arrested, and you are, don't call my name. So those people should be made to answer for their, for their crime. So, and then talking about labor and the economy, I'm happy the man that just left your studio talked about the fact that they saw the president, and the president was receptive, and he was cooperative. I hope the result of the meeting tonight will show everybody where each one stands. Sometimes we need to talk, because when you talk, you now know better what somebody else is thinking. So hopefully we'll see the result of that. And in terms of the economy, you see, we've had this dichotomy in the, in the foreign exchange, in the CBN, where you can sit in your house, and you can get a location for 430 or 440, and you go to the market and sell for 750. Without doing anything, you can become a multimillionaire overnight. So it is right that that- Round tripping? Yeah, yeah, round tripping. It is right that that is stopped. It is right that you crash there. And over time, the Naira will find its own balance. When we begin to, because I saw him also talking about uh, home, homemade goods. And I know this government has a lot of plans in terms of uh, 
bringing production to Nigeria. We import too many things, many things that we can actually bring the companies to come and produce in Nigeria. So by the time we begin to, when this government begins to roll out its policy and it begins to take effect, I am 100% sure that things will begin to improve right. and get better. Alaji um, Abagisani, Ayo is optimistic. Are you? No. We are not optimistic at all. It appears to me that Mr. President is cherry picking in the area of attacking the root cause of where we are today. Because I have not heard anything about the petroleum industry. The whole reason why we are where we are today is because that industry has been so mismanaged. You talk about round tripping. The real round tripping is in the people who bring empty vessels to Nigeria and collect you know, the, the so-called subsidy money. The, the real round tripping is the agency of the government that, is, that was importing this fuel deliberately destroyed the refineries paid billions of naira to people who are not working in that refinery, and we are collecting the crude oil which was allocated for domestic consumption, and will export them, and commission, and, and will import because, because refined you products have been in and, that sector before. Yes. So when you come, you're being in all, I mean, uh, within the NNPC uh, the sector yes. before, and when you say that people are intentionally destroying the refinery, yes. is that true? It's true. I mean, really? if I give you... Nigerians. I, Nigerians, it's true. And it has been proved that By it's themselves, true. going to... By themselves. Intentionally. How, 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 was it, how is it possible for Dangote to build a refinery that will produce the entire you know, capacity of the four refineries we have in this country? More than the, 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 even the, the capacity. What we have is just about 450,000 barrels per day. He is building 600 and something thousand barrels per day. How is it possible for a single individual to do that? And you have a government official that has limitless amount of uh, money and government facilities to ensure that things happen and they say they can't fix one refinery no i'm Eight interested years. because you are an insider you know a lot when you say that nigerians were intentionally <clears throat> destroying the refinery yes could that be right it's right it's right it's right because we budget money for turnaround maintenance uh -huh. you know and nothing is turned around except you know more money that is, is stolen i mean 90 reports is it's to replenish with the, all these uh, things I'm talking about. How we are losing money, you know, to areas that you can never even explain and nobody says anything. You, the, the oil and gas sector that you mentioned, yes. if Bola Tunubu is supposed to do something, yes. based on your insight, yes. you've worked several years there. Yes. Yes. What do you think he should do immediately? Oh, what he should do immediately is to do what he's doing now in CBN. You can't say that from the manager, anybody that is a manager status in NNPC, should please find something else to do. Why? Why? Because they have not delivered. Oh. Would that be fair on them? It's fair. We, we are losing billions of dollars. Even the official report by Naiti says billions of dollars, four billions or even more than that is being lost to recklessness, poor management. And it's deliberate. It's not that people are, it's not that they don't know the right thing to for do. For personal gains. For personal gains. Wow. That's why I say the president's a cherry picking. You know, he should confront the problem. The problem is that our, our economy is being burned from two, and the, the candle is being burned from two ends. Mm. You are paying for the subsidy. You are again, you know, uh, paying for the stolen revenue that should have accrued to the nation by way of crude oil theft, which is at its terrible, you know, level today before Buhari came to, to, to power. And Tinubu is continuing with that because nobody has been dealt with. It's as so, if and you if you don't deal with it, we, see, we are seeing a quagmire. Certainly. You can, you can make all the noise you want to make. It's like uh, Waleed was saying. You have a bucket, you know, which has a hole, and you are putting, you know... Uh, a lot of effort and yeah. putting a lot of resources. It's, it's just and like it's a, just a, basket, a basket case. Okay. Sadly. Ayo. Uh, I must say that uh, while I agree with his analysis completely, the only, way, the only place I can, ch I can disagree with him is the fact that the president has not conf confronted the NNPC. Uh, I think I was on one of your programs and I actually stated that uh, I also believe that the people running the NNPC ought to face the same uh, music. music like the CBN. However, what I also thought is probably you don't want to put too many things in the bucket at the same time. We see how the CBN uh, drama is playing out. But however, I agree that those people 
running the NNPC ought to be made to face the music. But also, I disagree with the fact that um, he has continued with what was doing, what was going on in the past. Because at least one of the first solution is to stop paying that criminal stuff call subsidy. That has stopped. However, those who have made our refinery unworkable, I mean, you have about three or four refineries. Yeah, People four are earning salaries there every day. No doubt about what he said. A lot have gone into what they call TAM, turnaround maintenance, has been done year over year, and there's been no result. And the man who's pre so pretendent over it is still sitting there. No, I also think that is a wrong thing. I thought, or I still think, such person should be made to answer. Well, and aside from him, I believe there are a lot of other people involved in this game. So, so maybe the president will, over time, look at that in industry, mm. but we hope, or I personally hope, it will not take too long no. before that there's industry is moving to now. There's an urgency of now. It needs that, to do it urgently, immediately. Yes, de definitely. Like urgently. in the class because, of emergency of full, full security. security. Because, yeah. because you, can't, you can't bring about these draconian initiatives. Good, yes. It, you know, from the economy side, it's good. But it's the draconian measures that Nigerians are suffocating. And you have left people that have Great put terms. us where we are to be, you know, cozy, you know, enjoying, you know, smiling to the bank and everything. And the same thing is going on, you know, and you are chasing shadow that you are... So it needs to be drastic. That's what you are describing. There are two forms of subsidies. We must deal with them. You are dealing with subsidy on the, on the, on the foreign exchange, isn't it? Because yeah. there was subsidy. It's also subsidy. You know, the amount of dollars that MFLA was burning unnecessarily, you know, given to his friends and uh, whatever, you know, is subsidy. So another subsidy that is even worse than, you know, or as, as bad as MFLA is the NNPC subsidy. Well, uh, uh, let me get your view on this one. Uh, the, uh, the president cannot do the job alone. Yeah. He's recruiting and he's putting up names. 19 people have been added to it, mostly populated by former governors. Are you impressed by that list? No, no, no Nigerian will tell you he's impressed by the list that the president has brought out. No Nigerian will tell are you, you Are you disappointed? I'm disappointed, awfully disappointed, because, like I said, Mr. President Tinubu is behaving differently from what I expected of him. President Buhari did 42. He's, yeah. done, he's going to do 47. It's not even the, the, the number. You know, it's, it's the fact that Nigerians, if you listen to Nigerians, they are telling you recycling is, is, is not what... President Tinubu should think about. You know why I'm so disappointed? President Tinubu personified the politics of this country, democracy. He lived all his life as a democratic you know, uh, uh, individual who fought you know, with his life, actually, you know, to, to ensure that we have democracy that we are enjoying today. So how can you come and then you know, uh, 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 embark on policies that you know are anti-people and you now put people that you know, people don't, some of the people that he put as ministers were rejected by the people. Some of them contested and they were rejected. So how can you, how can you bring them back through the back door again and say they, should, they must preside over the affairs of the people? That's not the kind of country we want to run. We must begin to give Nigerians confidence. So you are looking for fresh faces, new faces? Yes, because if you talk about capacity, you talk about track record, we have people that have capacity and track record. And for God's sake, it's not about one person. But, you know, it's not just the minister. The minister, even in the ministry, the minister does not, you know, work alone. He has experts surrounding him. But if you bring somebody that has baggage of, of, uh, of, uh, of issues, you know, around, you know, surrounding him, and then what do you think the other lieutenants will do? Yeah, I, I, uh, you and are... we want to, want to put a stop to corruption. Mm. So don't put faces that personify corruption as your lieutenant, because what the ministers are doing, they are exercising the powers of Mr. President in those ministries. They are the presidents, actually. So don't tell me that these people are you. So your hope is not renewed at all? Not yet. My hope is almost dashed. Oh. Aya, you are on the inside. Is it feeling mutual from those who are on the outside uh, about the crop of people that the president have put forward? Well, I'm very impressed with uh, Mr. Wale Edun yesterday when he was cleared. I have people I'm impressed with. I was also impressed with uh, Mr. Uh, the son, Latif Fagbimi, and a few others. The other people, I will have to wait and see because I don't want to talk about things I really have little knowledge about. 
I was impressed by my Egbo Nasser Arufai, the former governor of Kaduna State. Yeah, he was. He, he, he knows his onions. I think there are a few good names there. However, for the other ones, they will have to prove themselves. And I don't want to uh, dismiss Do people. you imagine, yeah. Ayo Yalo, yeah. that your party, Bola Dinobu government, would uh, bring uh, former governors and a lot of... No, I always think there will be some former governors. A lot of critics just, have said uh, bringing some of these governors is just uh, uh, for political benefits. Uh, they're just paying back uh, maybe those who owe... Uh, some political so, uh, is, sometimes, is a gift sometimes some... we like to jump onto cliche. Even if you are a Christian or a Muslim like my father here, you are serving God because there is a benefit attached to it. So if people are in politics, they are looking for something. So I really don't see anything wrong in people getting benefit for where they work for. If they actually worked, for instance, some of these governors worked for him to win his mandate. So there is compensation on, so on being, one side. Let me finish. There is compensation on one side, is but a way to go. there is competence on the other side. That's why I mentioned for you people that I am really, really, really impressed with because I believe these are people who bring in competence to the table. And I believe they are the ones who will run the economy. Someone like a, a, a Wali Edu, for instance, very impressive name, great resume, excellent track record. Those are people that I expect to run the economy. And for me, it satisfies every... Thing, I think yeah, I, I see some, some, quality some quality on this list also. Yeah, uh, no there is quality. a Boson Tijani. Um, uh, there is a, a few names who they have done so much for themselves in the private sector. Exactly. Uh, but other than that, um, uh, well, I like also Muhammad Idris. In from Muhammad Idris. No, they're, they're a party. They're the, the, the doctor, Professor, the, 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 the Professor Party, is most likely going to be heading the health ministry. That's another excellent name. In fact, it just went off my head. That's another excellent name. So, there, yes, there is a I, medical doctor who is an expert in kidney uh, and uh, what a view is being in the United States who is on the new on list. The new list. Uh, yeah, the um, there is a guy who, uh, who, one of those who pioneered IT, uh, the uh, something, IC hub or CC hub or something. In and for Lagos, the first time, we're having a, city, from a, 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 a we're having a citizen or an indigenous of the FCT, Gisalo. Yeah, Gisalo. for the first time, we've never had an, uh, someone from FCT. Being in the cabinet, so we can't throw everything out of the out of the way. Yes, there are some things that you think could be done better, but largely and by and by and by, we've, we it's not as bad as people are trying to make it look for political reasons. Like I said, everybody who is doing whatever they are doing are looking. Don't for you something. think that a lot of Nigerians have high hopes for Bolatin? No, no, and Bola your party. will succeed. He will succeed. Oh President, no, no, it's, it's, it's a matter Tumbo of expectation. That yeah, if I, think... I, I have expectation myself, so I believe he will succeed. I, okay, for instance. The labor man that came here told you that they had a discussion with him. And you could see how positive the discussion went. So that means he's somebody who is hands-on. We saw how he changed his mind on some policies he wanted to roll out. So he tells you he listens. Right. So unlike the part that you just talk and talk, nobody's listening. For the first time, we're having a president mm -hmm. who is going to listen. Yeah. Even if he makes a mistake, he's prepared to correct his mistake. You say your, your hopes are dashed. But almost, I mean, for some of these things, almost that. Almost that. Yes, because <laughs> there are good things that I've seen. Yeah. Like engaging with Nigerians. Exactly. I hope he keeps it on. He will. To be regular. He's a, he's a Democrat. If not fortnightly, at least once in a month. And then I don't want him to sit in that chair where it's like, if you are, you know, I want him to, to, to copy, you know, what uh, Jonathan was doing in a relaxed, you know, manner. Yeah. You know, have conversation with people like you, you know, who will uh, ask questions and then he will give answers to reassure Nigerians that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm there for you. Yeah. You know, that is very important. I'm actually hoping to see President Tunobu in Wuse Market one of these days. No, I don't think. I'm that hoping. Is right. No, no, no. He's the he's a, <laughs> he's a president he's a of the Nigerian I, people. I, I, I'm hoping I, I, to see him in a supermarket. Let him feel what Nigerians are you don't feeling. Have to it's difficult. To feel what Some, if he, as you a big man, have have as, as a big man, you may not. No, 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 there are presidents in the United States who you know, go. Perception. Perception matters. They call it photo ops, anyways. Yes. They go and yeah. have uh, lunch or dinner exactly. with people. Exactly. They go and with buy common stuff. people. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. You need to good. interface yeah, with the Nigerians. You still have to look at the security implication of those kind of things. This thing, if an American president goes on the street, he does it. No American president will do that. Look, look, no, I, I, look president. The president. I don't know about senior UK, Obama but the, um, Obama American president, before much. he goes out, the amount of security that will have gone into that 
Eventually, he does it. On the president of Syria, who went to. Uh, that that is because he has like. eliminated all his enemies now. We saw how he killed people with chemical. The point of making is that. We are hoping. I mean, and since terrorize Syria, it's the point. Yeah, but he terrorizes people. He killed them with chemical weapon. It's a dangerous example to use. We have a freedom to hope. I think. Since the agenda of this government is renewed. Even Alaji, my father here, just said his hope is not fully dashed. So it will be renewed, hopefully. Yeah, Alaji, yeah, yeah. your hope will be renewed. I can assure you. I can assure you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Yeah. My hope and, is and, one, one of these days I will see thing. President Tinobu she at Wuse Market. You should, I thought you would she say you should come to your studio. Downside. That there's would have been downside. better. That would have been a good one. There's one downside. Yes. I have not seen representation of the opposition parties in the in cabinet. The cabinet. It's as, bad. as a matter of uh, given, given what about the no, I, I, but but that's just weaker is an opposition, no, it's a PDP toxic. member. That's a toxic representation. Of well, I don't know about party. that, but it's that's toxic. an opposition. We, no, 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 please don't, don't, don't. Uh, you, are, you are again missing the point. The point I'm making is that Mr. President should, you know, be able to uh, look beyond APC. Yeah, gentlemen, we, we are totally yes. out of time. Thank you, Alagi Abaji, a national chairman of IPAC, yes. a Yalawa political economist, and a member of the APC. Thank you so much, everyone.